I saw Esther Ute last night in the restaurant looking beautiful, drinking her tea. I want to hang out with her. I want to have lunch and hang out. Who wants to hang out with Esther, really? I do. <sighs> Come to the Vortex. Hang out with the better part of her. Hang out with the biggest part of her. Hang out with the Abraham that is her. Hang out with the core of that which she is. And she'll show up in your experience from time to time in her fleshiness. She has. Okay, um, I'm a comedian. And ah, the medium and the comedian. Yeah. <laughs> and We've stolen that line from Esther's pink-haired friend, who is a comedian, who does hang out with Esther. Yeah. And they are going to go on the road. They're going to be the medium and the comedian. <laughs> They're not really. Uh, all right, I'll come. Esther's not a medium, but I'll you are a comedian. Me. Yes. Yeah. Do you, does Source see me like that? Or so it's like, I also work. I mean, the comedy is like when I'm on stage and I'm making people laugh, like there's nothing better to me than laughter. But I also work, you know, to afford, you know, my bills or whatever, you know, whatever like. But all I really want to do is the comedy and make people laugh. You know why it calls you in such a strong way is because when you are in the mode of doing that, you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on. Yes. And that source within you understands the audience, knows where they are, and is utilizing you and your clarity to raise them on the emotional scale, to take the sting out of some of the things that they're living and put it in the perspective of alignment. Yes? Yes. That's all I want to do. Like, you know... That's, That's not all you want to do. If it was all you were doing, after a while you would say, do I have to keep doing this? You're wanting variety and diversity. How could you know you're happy if you're always happy? Right. Would you like to just eat all the time? Yes. Now, see, we were smart enough to see that coming. And since we are the medium and the comedian, we set you up for that. And life is always doing that, isn't it? Don't you all live in a situation comedy? Isn't it just delightful? Don't you love how the universe can put you in the juxtaposition with things to bring clarity and understanding to you in just the most delightful of ways? And I, I'll start, like I was telling my girlfriends that are here with me today and my sister, and I'm like, you know what, I start off in the morning, I wake up, I have coffee, I listen to Abraham on YouTube, and I feel so good, and then I'm driving to work and I'm still feeling good. Then all of a sudden, like, here comes my boss with his, like, asshole face and I'm like why am I attracting like why are you near me well here's the thing anybody feel the rumble strip anybody realize all four wheels are on the other side of the rumble strip so your question is, how did you attract him? Yeah, I, can't, I feel like, and my sister, you know, and then they'll say, I'm like, how do I keep attracting these? That's how. Yes. Because it's active, right? Because I expect it. Is that what it is? Expectation is just strong belief. And a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. So as you continue to depart from your inner being, who does not feel that way about that person, that's the time when Esther says, then you need more information. <laughs> Your inner being does not feel that way. So what happens is you see something and you depart from the clarity of your inner being. And then because you don't want to depart from the clarity of your inner being. And since it happened while you're looking at his face. <laughs> you associate him as being the wrongdoer who has caused you to feel that way. When actually he is fulfilling the reality that you are creating and continue to create as you talk about him and feel that way about him. He can't buck your current. He could buck your current, but most don't. Most live up to the expectations that you practice. And I want to love him and I try to, I'm like, look at the good things about him. But here's the thing. Here's a much easier way because there's a lot about him that's not all that lovable. <laughs> but here's an easier way. I want to see him as my inner being sees him, period. I want to feel about him like my inner being feels about him. Because when I look at him differently, I don't feel so good. And I refuse to let him be the reason that I'm denying myself connection to my inner being in the now. You might even say that to yourself out loud in reference to him. You are not going to deprive me of who I am. You see, here's something really important. Let's just stay here for a minute. You're really going to like this. And this is a new conversation, and it's a leading-edge thought for these masterful creators that you have become. So we are not saying to you that everyone that you are interacting with 
is lovely just as they are. A lot of them are not all that lovely. But you cannot deny the truth of who you are by perceiving them differently than the way your inner being sees them. And so when you choose something that is a departure from who you are, that is validated by their behavior. In other words, we understand it's a reality that you're witnessing. But the question is, is the what is that I'm witnessing really what I want to devote my now to? Or do I want to see the now that is happening around me through the eyes of source? Do I want it to be a moment of sweet spot and expansion? Or do I want it to be a moment where I'm depriving myself of something? What happens when you find something that you're struggling with and you give a lot of attention to it to the point that you've got pet names and you have fun conversations that you're having with each other. You're not allowing the law of attraction to work things out. You're holding what you don't want tied into your experience. So... As Esther looks back on the experience and she realizes how the perfection of the universe offered the perfect opportunity for the releasing of this, she knows that she was in vibrational alignment when that happened. But then after the fact, what makes you so ready to condemn yourself? What makes you so ready to say, these are wrong actions that I'm offering? What we want you to do is to acknowledge the rightness of who you are. And in doing so, in knowing the rightness of who you are, That condemnation of others cannot be part of your experience. You can't be in alignment with who you are and pushing against someone else at the same time. It's just not a possible thing. So when you decide that alignment is what you're reaching for, then you discover that under any and all circumstances, you can maintain your alignment. The opposite is believing that you have to control the response or the understanding of others about you. And that is a long road that you never come to the end of. That's a completely unsatisfying experience, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To try to get somebody to understand who you really are and what you really mean. That's not your job. It's not your job to convince anybody anything about you. It's your job to be in alignment with who you are and law of attraction will work out the details for you. Did we get there? Yes. Completely? We have one more question. Okay. My mom, um, you know, she transformed back into non-physical, if I'm saying it right. Her birthday is January 24th. Right, and I'm always constantly seeing on clocks one twenty four, one one twenty four, one zero. Any way that that number can present itself, it does. Is that like I don't know if they physically see you? Or yes. Now let me ask you, and I don't mean this to be funny, but like, let's say you like pleasuring yourself, right? <laughs> Are they watching? Like, cause that could, you know what I mean? Like, do they see that? Cause then you feel like it ruins it. Like, you know. If you go under the covers, can they still see it? She's a comedian even when she doesn't mean to be a comedian. Or there's never a time that you don't mean to be a comedian, is there? When Jerry and Esther first realized that we were flowing into their experience, that was a concern of theirs too. And then... They came to realize that because your inner being is always loving you and never condemning you and never finding fault with you, that then there's never a reason for you to want to hide yourself from something that you can never hide yourself from. So, yes, your mother is aware of you. (laughs) Your mother is aware of you. But you have to understand the absence of condemnation is only known powerfully by you when you are in the mode of condemnation. In other words, this ties precisely in to what we were just talking about. Almost everyone is concerned about the way they are being perceived by others. Now, it's interesting. You're talking about something as if it embarrasses you, but you're talking about it in front of a few hundred people. (laughs) And is it because you feel safe here? Is it because you feel that there's an absence of condemnation here? Why would you Talk about something that you seem to be worried about in front of a lot of people. No, I'm not worried. I'm just wondering, you know? I'm just but wondering. But feel what we're getting at. Yeah. One of the things, in fact, it may be the thing that trips more people up than all other things put together, is you care about the way you are perceived. And for a good part of what you have been living and what you are living, there is this need to be approved of because the way others are feeling about you is affecting the way you are feeling. 
And we understand that that's a sort of natural byproduct of life, that when you say something that makes people laugh, it is pleasing to you that they are being uplifted by something that you are doing. And that if you do something that someone disapproves of, that in their anger or in their disappointment in you, it makes you feel as if you should have done something different because you are all born uplifters. You are all born wanting to be a vibrational match to who you really are. But when you realize that your connection to your own inner being, your connection to that source within you who is always adoring you no matter what, once you line up with that and once you are consistently there, then you come to realize that there is never anything that you need to hide from your inner being. And it's a good thing because there's nothing that you ever can hide from your inner being. And after you connect with your inner being and feel the love of inner being, you'll realize that so much of the pleasure that you are living is because your inner being is living the pleasure right there along with you. The greatest pleasure that you are experiencing is the pleasure that you are allowing yourself to feel. In other words, when we talk about joy and you feel joy, the reason that you are feeling joy is because your inner being is joyous and you are not pinching yourself off from that joy, you see. You have all done pretty much of a number on yourself by listening to those who have sought to control you, who have said to you, if you do this, you are bad, and if you do this, you are good. They say to you, you must not do these things, and you must do these things, and then you can be part of my club. Then you can be part of my religious club or whatever it is. And so many have tried to do all the things that they said to do and not to do the things that they said not to do. And then they look around, and there are other people who are thriving and joyful who aren't keeping those rules. And then they say to you, oh, you can't take score by what's happening with you here. It's, it's all going to happen in the afterlife. In other words, if you're too happy now, then you'll be punished for it later. Does any of that make sense? So you begin to carry around these attempts at presenting yourself to others in a way that they will approve of you. And it makes you nuts because they are asking different things from you. If you have great success, there will be those who hate you. And if you have great failure, there will be those who hate you. There will always be those who will feel however they've decided to feel that you have no control over. But we promise you, it's not your dearly departed moving into non-physical energy, pure positive energy, source energy mother who is ever going to condemn you for anything ever. And your belief that she might will disconnect you from source energy quicker than anything else. Thank you. Instead, how it is that they are surrounding you, they are walking with you, they are flowing with you. You have their undivided attention. You have our undivided attention. That's why we so are encouraging you to do your best to move up the emotional scale and reach for thoughts that feel good and get into that sweet spot. So the fullness of all that we are enjoying about your life experience, you will be in on too. Do you realize how perceptive you can be when you are in sync with source energy? That with all of us looking that you won't miss anything, you won't miss opportunities, you won't miss the impulse to say the perfect word at the perfect time. You'll be able to devour your environment through all of your physical senses. This sumptuous, sensuous, delicious, fantastic tapestry of life experience that you are all involved in is being devoured by source energy through your eyes. You are the extension of source out here on the leading edge, having all of those experiences, you see. But when you pinch yourself off from it by remembering some flawed premise that somebody else who wanted to control you gave to you, it is our promise to you that when you are in sync with source, that you will be uplifting to this world. When we say to Esther, we really mean it when we say, everything is always working out for you. When she accepts that and knows that, that's when she allows the fullness of that which we are to flow through her. And that's when she loves her life the most. And the same is true of you. Enough? Yes, thank you. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next